Good afternoon guys and welcome back to the channel. Chris Dennis here, putting specialist and short game performance coach. Today I know in the series we said we were going to do a few different shots around the greens and we will be doing one or two today. But the first thing I want to do is talk to you a little bit today about how to test your short game coming into the season. Obviously with the season just around the corner, I mean last week it was glorious and 18 degrees and then yesterday we had snow so uh, very hard to practice at the minute but ground conditions are getting firmer you can see on the tee box here it has been top dress same on your golf course your fairways might have been top dress or they're starting to get firmer underfoot and we're now thinking about a little less confidence with strike and i've just seen a couple of members up practicing on the chipping green i've had a couple of guys a couple of pros in who are just saying it's changing of the year it's changing when we get into firmer lies and I want to practice and do that. So a good thing for you to do is come down to your practice field. We've got, or practice field, or chipping green, or wherever you've got, or even on the range, and don't focus on target. So here, what I'm gonna to do to start with is work on some one-handed drills. So working out how I can get my body and club working together and see where I'm at with my, with my swing, not my stroke. Again, right hand only and left hand only, keeping the arms connected to my chest and letting that club swing. So if I was coming down to the walls of the camera, letting that club pass, finishing out in front of a turning body. And that's one big thing I see in winter, everybody gets back foot, they just want to clip it off the top and they're just trying to make sure they get some kind of strike with the greens being soft and receptive we can get it on there and it's not going to run out. But in the summer, that might now land on the green, run out 20, 30 feet, and then we three put. So we want to start presenting a little bit more loft, using a little bit more bounce now, the ground, ground's a little bit firmer, and making sure we get a consistent strike. So coming in first, for a right-handed golfer, I would always start with your right hand only. If we have any kind of acceleration and hit at the ball, you'll see I won't make a good strike and I'm gonna be lagging the club behind. I'm not gonna get the contact I want. And if that's the shot that you see, you're quickly gonna be caught out here as you'll start to catch them heavy. So what we'd like to see is the club face a little bit open, take your normal setup, and then from here, let the club do the work with the body. And you see there straight away, I get a nice flight, I got a good strike there, out at the centre of the club, I will try and show you, ever so slightly, towards the toe, but a better strike, a nice motion and I was able to let my club and the body do all the work for me. And you see there I can open this club up more and then try and get a higher flight, same thing, let the club do the work. Right, nice and easy there slow down into that the club dropped i didn't get my body and club matching together and that's the thing there this also happens to me and this is something that i have to come down here and practice i'm not going to show you that i hit perfect shots all the time because by all means i don't so there i need to now work on that get this matching up a little bit better smooth that tempo out then come in here nice and open again set the club and hit that ball Again, a lot more loft on there. Club head, obviously I didn't make enough swing for it to reach the green, but you see it did the job that I was wanting to do. If I now go square, so a little bit squarer with the leading edge, make the same motion, you can swing back and through. You see that launches the lowest flights that I've hit there. So come down guys and trial and error this. So trial and error, open it wide up, having it slightly open, and then squaring it up and see if you can match in the strikes and find which one is easier for you. Do you struggle with a certain one? If you do so, maybe give that a little bit more time down here. So for a right-handed golfer, left hand only is certainly going to be the hardest one because this is the one where we're not used to. And what you'll find is if you have a strong grip, it's gonna be very hard and you won't have the weight if you have a very weak grip Again, it's gonna be very hard for you to make contact. So this will really find out if you grip and if you are in control of the club. So again, right hand holds the left arm onto the body and we're gonna make a motion now. Again, get the body and club working. 
little divot, nice and low, plenty of spin on that. So you can see once I get this timing good, you'll see that the strike becomes better, and as a result, we're gonna get more spin and more control. So I want to go now a little bit higher, again, so I'll open it up, that was pretty square. Let's go a little bit higher now. Good. Mid-flight, again, a lot of spin on there, but we see that the club's finished out in front of me. So, let's now go, let's see if I can get a high flight with this left hand. That was the one I struggled with my right hand, so that will be one that I will be practicing with the right hand. So, nice and wide open here. Let's see. Good. So, I've actually found it easier with the left hand there, which 90% of golfers might find it the opposite way around. Easier with the right hand, not with the left. Once we've done that and we've hit a few shots, so let's say we've hit three shots with each flight, let's now bring two hands in and try and repeat the same motion. So I'm going to try and now get one that's pretty square, so a nice motion, club finishes out in front. Very good, so a low flight there. I'm now going to go for a mid flight. So I'm going to open that up, the setup and everything stays the same, I'm not moving the ball position, I'm just going to open the club a little bit wider. And there's my mid flight, and then let's try now the elusive, the one that I've struggled with the most, and again it's not a shot I play a lot, and if you do watch James Robinson's channel you will know I don't use it a lot because I don't have a 60. This is a 56 degree, but let me open that wide up now and do the same motion. Good. And again, you'll see there and on the green, they've all finished around about the same distance, other than the ones that I've maybe misstruck or the one that I opened up too much when I tried to play the flop shot. So very much there, we're going to start to get some feedback on your kind of motion. If you're somebody who has a lot of lag, we might see you hit some of the dreaded word. I will not use it, but I might put it on screen. We might see a couple of those. If you're somebody who is really handsy, we might see some thins. And that's a result of what we can see from doing this drill. So we're really catching it out. And then you've got to be able to think, okay, if you're using too much hands, right, I need to focus more on my body turning, and I'll get a good contact. If you're somebody who's catching them heavy, we know that we need to smooth out your motion and not get too much lag. So from there, I can smooth that out, get it longer, and get a good contact. So that's something you can do to test out your short game before the season. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pick a line and just talk through something that I've seen in the last couple of days when I've been out on the golf course, is being able to judge the different lies, but also thinking about landing zone. Depending on the conditions, we have had snow in the last couple of days, but also if you're out early in the morning, there's a lot of dew on the ground, we've got to counter in what kind of bounce or what kind of reaction we're going to get on the green. So let's go and get a shot, let's go and find a little bit of rough, we'll get a green side shot that we need to think about the landing zone. Okay, now we're over in the rough, so I've gone for a light, it's still a little bit wet over here, although the sun is out, it hasn't dried it out uh, so far this afternoon. But a little bit of a wet lie, so we're going to get that a lot at the moment, if you're playing early in the morning there's going to be a lot of water resistance in between the club and the ball. So first thing there when assessing the lie, we know we're not going to get as much spin. So we're not going to get as much spin, so we need to decide, is this a shot that we need to run out, or do we need more loft? If we're not going to get as much spin, we're going to need more landing angle to control this shot, which is downhill towards the green. And also what I've seen a lot recently is people will not take into account that it's wet, so they're not going to get as much spin. But also on the green, there's a little bit of dew still at the top, it's still a little bit wet, and as a result from there, the ball's going to skid. So the ball's going to hit that, skid a little bit forwards, and I see a lot of people going 15, 20 foot past, when if they'd have landed it a little bit higher, the ball wouldn't have skid, because it'd be landing softer and taking some speed out of that. So here for this kind of shot, although I've got plenty of green to work with, I'm going to have plenty of loft on this shot. I'm going to think about what I've just done over there, making sure that I keep my speed nice and smooth, I don't get ahead of this. 
And from there, I will then make a motion with plenty of loft on, let it release nice and high, and that's stopped very quick. So a little bit short of the flag, but you see there, I can now practice these kind of shots. It wasn't a great lie. Again, sit it down nicely there. Practice this shot of, right, I saw that now didn't roll out as much. So if I was going out on the course now, I know a little bit more about the greens because they are the same on the golf course. So I would not open it as much on this second shot. Again, keep that tempo nice and smooth. Not as high just past and you see it's not easy from here so practicing these kind of shots we get onto the golf course is going to help us when we do go out there we're going to gain confidence i know there the strikes were both perfect because i've practiced that over there i've got my tempo a little bit smoother as a result again a very centered strike there i'll move most of the grass but a very centered strike so i'm striking the ball well getting the flight that i want but I want to come round here, see if I can close the face, open the face, what clubs do I need? But by testing out your short game to start with, then coming around the green, we're gonna hit the golf course into the season with a lot more confidence on what kind of a strike. We're not gonna get out there tense and fearing that, oh, I'm not gonna get this. Everything gets a little bit quick. We thin it, we knife it. And if you're a mid handicap golfer, even a single figure handicap golfer, this is where you're gonna save a lot of shots as opposed to knocking your driver another five yards is not potentially going to save you anything. It might cost you more shots. So guys, hopefully you've enjoyed that. Comment below, guys, what kind of shots do you want to see coming up to the season? What different lies do you want to see? And I'll see you again later in the week.